this individual, this 17-year-old perpetrator, was in illegal possession of these items. Whether it was a, a, an SBS or whether it was the regular, you know, regular shotgun, whether it was a, a 38 revolver or whatever, he was in illegal possession. So the question becomes, how did he access these firearms? But here's the other thing, parents, and this is what I want you to focus on. What child in your home would be able to make multiple bombs and you not be aware of it? I mean, I can tell you where my kids are at any given point of the day. I can tell you what my kids' schedules are. I know if they're even messing around with the tiniest Legos ever, you know, the little micro ones. I can even tell if they're doing that. What parent is unaware of their 17-year-old child manufacturing pressure cooker bombs or pipe bombs? Multiple, because one of the things that law enforcement confirmed was that there were multiple explosive devices, not just on campus, but also off campus at two different sites. And they were working to contain these particular areas, and they were working to identify exactly how many and where these devices are located. We still don't have confirmation on exactly how many or where. So there were several. This 17-year-old was busy. How did this 17-year-old a, get the, all of the materials and manufacture this under his parents' noses, or was it? Under and I was reading about this study, uh, these uh, numerous studies, and in fact, they went back and they noticed that all of these school shooters had one, well, had a, several commonalities, but one in particular stood out. Every single one of them was motivated, and every single one of them had at some point, either in writings that were discovered at their home, in social media or something, they had in some way referenced Columbine, which was a, a, a motivating factor. The media has got to stop creating more of these monsters by oversaturation. I'm not saying don't responsibly report on things as they happen. Look, I understand it. But constantly showing the image of the murderer, constantly saying their name, is completely unnecessary. I understand if you want to report it once they've been identified, but after that, according to what these studies have shown, we need to be very cognizant of what this creates. Breaking news, this is happening now in Clayton County in Jonesboro. We have reports of a shooting near the campus of a high school. It is Mount Zion High School. There are three victims, one is dead, and the Clayton County School District now is working this incident. This is a school that is nine uh, through 12, and it was formed in 1990. Again, it's in Jonesboro, and we wanna get an update right now, see what sort of information we have. Any Politan now joins us. And he is at the 11 Alive Bridge. Vinny? All right, thanks so much, Jeff. And um, this information now just coming into the bridge, which is where we get all our breaking news here at 11 Alive. Here's what we know right now, Jeff. We know that the shooting happened near Mount Zion High School. We know that according to the Clayton County graduation schedule, the Perry Center, which is an alternative campus school, had their graduation beginning at 6 p.m. today at the Performing Arts Center, which is... Uh, also known as the PAC, which is on the campus of Mount Zion. Now, we also know from the Clayton County Fire Department that three people have been shot. One of them has died. Uh, the victims were taken to Piedmont, uh, Henry County Hospital, and Atlanta Medical Center, and Southern Regional Hospital. Of course, we have multiple crews on the way to Mount Zion as well as the hospitals. We're going to continue to gather more information for you here at the bridge, and we'll give you updates as soon as we get them, Jeff. Melvin Blocker is the name of the principal, and this school has about 1,300 students. And again, this shooting happened in uh, Clayton County in Jonesboro tonight. Penny, thank you very much.